Hey guys, in this video we're going to interact with our Raspberry Pi via our REST API. We'll do this through the command line as well as Swagger UI by making HTTP requests to our pins endpoint. If you haven't seen my previous videos where we go over the setup of our Raspberry Pi and the building of our REST API, go check those videos out. I'll put a link to those tutorials as well as the code used in this video down in the description. Okay, so let's start by logging into our Raspberry Pi. And we'll change into our RESTful Pi directory. You can clone this, it'll be in the description. And let's run that Flask app we wrote in the last video. Okay, so if I run this command, it'll start up our Flask server. So I would open another terminal tab or a pane if you're using a terminal multiplexer like Tmux, so we can make our HTTP request from one of them while seeing the incoming request from the Flask server. So we can see that our app is running and listening on port 5000 of our local host here on the Raspberry Pi. So let's make a get request to the pins endpoint. So there's our nine pins that we initialized in the app in the last video. And we can make a request to a specific pin. So now let's try turning on an LED by making a patch request. We'll add a content type header here. We want to let them know that we're sending JSON data. And then we'll specify our data, making sure that we escape our double quotes here. Okay, so we'll send that. There we go, we lit up our third LED. And now if we make a get request to pin three, we'll see that its state has been updated. Okay, so things seem to be working, but if you remember, Flask Rest Plus is integrated with Swagger UI. So the way we wrote our program in the last video, it actually generated a Swagger UI landing page for us where we can interact with our API through our browser. So let's just quickly take a look at our code here. And you'll see we specified this docs endpoint here. So if we run a get request on this docs endpoint, you'll see we're getting returned the Swagger page that has been generated for us. But there's a problem. Since I'm connected remotely, how am I gonna be able to open this up in a browser? If you have a desktop OS installed on your Raspberry Pi with a browser installed on it, this wouldn't be a problem. You could simply hit this docs endpoint in your browser and be fine. But since I'm on a headless Pi here, if I want to access the Swagger UI from my local machine's browser, I'll need to forward a port through SSH. So this can be done by the following command. So I'm gonna to switch to my local machine here and run this command. So this will forward any request on port 999 on my local machine to port 5000 on the Raspberry Pi. I have a video on SSH tunneling, so check that out if you want some more details on how that works. I'll put a link in the description. So now that I forward this port, I can make a get request from my local machine to localhost 9999 at the docs point and be returned that Swagger UI page, which is being hosted on the Raspberry Pi. It's pretty cool. Oh, it's even cooler. Well, let's switch back to our Raspberry Pi here. Is if we take our browser here on our local machine and hit this docs endpoint, we'll be great with the Swagger website being hosted from the Flask app that's running on a Raspberry Pi. So here you'll see all the documentation generated by our doc strings in our Python program there. So let's play around with Swagger a little bit here. So let's uh, turn on some more LEDs. So it's a pretty cool interface here. Makes it pretty easy to make requests. It's kind of like Postman, but it, it's working out of your browser with the documentation you added to your program source code. So let's make a patch. I'm not going to change anything except for the state. So let's just turn on the red one here. So that's ID4. There's a red one going on. Okay, so let's turn that one back off, maybe. There you go. So you can see our Swagger UI is working as well. So we verified that our API is working as expected via both the command line using curl and also through the Swagger UI front end. So in the next video, we'll write a Python program that will use this API to control the pins in some more interesting ways. And the cool thing is it will all be done over the internet using the five basic HTTP requests. So stay tuned for that and make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe so you don't miss when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.